So it's been about a year and four months uh, since I've had the boat and I've actually been living on the boat since um, April last year, so just over a year. And I just wanted to tell you a bit about uh, what it's been like and um, you know, since I've been on the boat and doing it up, it's now become a lot easier because the majority of it's done up. Uh, not much more to do actually. So the biggest difference is of living on a boat compared to a house. Um, I've probably um, your energy consumption, you have to be mindful, um, especially through the winter and uh, heating and things like that. So they're the things that most people would consider as being a problem. But actually, um, if you get it right, it's something you never really think about. Stay there. You all right? <coughs> oh, morning. <laughs> So one of the greatest things that I love about living on a boat is that I get to wake up in the countryside pretty much all the time. That's of course if I don't decide to uh, moor up in the, in the city. But the great thing is, is I can choose my garden. So at this time of year we get a lot of day boaters and they're not always uh, totally clued up with the etiquette and sometimes they go speeding past your boat and uh, not really their fault. Um, I think they need, just need more training really um, and sometimes the boats can be quite heavily laden with 10 or more people. And usually they look like they're about to sink, somehow they don't. Um, but they're generally nice people, probably just a bit drunk sometimes, but they're nice people. And then also at this time of the year, because people are now thinking about going on holiday, the people who have their own boat or they're in boat sharing uh, sort of schemes, they come out on their two week trip out and um, for some reason they don't like uh, my wide beam and they give me a bit of grief and uh, sometime a bit abusive saying I shouldn't be on the canal and um, quite often they speed past my boat um, in protest of me being there which is a bit of a shame. So another thing that uh, is quite annoying living on a boat through the wet season and winter the towpath can be pretty horrible to walk on and quite slippy when it's uh, all frozen over it's not so bad but when it becomes warm enough for it to turn into mud and a bit slippy it's not the best so one of the gripes is not enough mooring points we can't just tie up anywhere especially being on a wide beam because when the canal is restricted with um, reeds and other things growing, uh, we would have to be too far out before we could actually get a plank across and not restrict um, the waterway and other boats won't be able to pass us because we're so wide. So we do have to be a bit mindful and we are massively restricted because of the waterway is not being clear enough. So can element of trust, why not make it a little bit more waterways more accessible for us so we don't have to all go into the same places all the time and, and wait for the next mooring point. We also don't have enough uh, toilet facilities um, emptying out points along the canal. Um, where I am currently it's probably a good maybe an hour and a half of this in that direction and the next one in that direction um, is probably about five hours 
uh, continuously cruising and also um, there is a tunnel that I would have to go through um, which I can't go through without permission and being assisted by the Canal and River Trust. So in reality I'm talking a good couple of days um, to get to that point where I could get to the toilet facilities to empty out. When you need to pump out in a wide beam or in any boat you need to pump out there and then because you're already full and um, basically the toilet's redundant until you've pumped out. Um, not the best thing to get yourself into really so that's why we opted for a composting toilet. So as a continuous cruiser I have to move my boat every 14 days and I love it but it can be a bit of a problem when uh, the Canal and River Trust write to you telling you in a very threatening manner that uh, you haven't adhered to the rules and um, I've had this already uh, within the first year and I had to prove to them that I had actually in fact moved my boat more than enough um, which I understand the rules I abide by the rules I agree with them because I think that everybody should have the right to be um, having the same mooring point as you and the chance to um, but uh, to have to prove to the Canal and River Trust that uh, you've actually moved um, I think is a bit a bit bad and uh, the way they write to you is quite uh, aggressive and I think that should really be changed. So one of the problems that sometimes we can have uh, is getting stuff on and off the boat, particularly whilst I've been building the boat. Um, this has been a bit of an issue and you have to know roughly when you're next going to be at somewhere you can park the vehicle quite close so you can get materials on and off your boat or deliveries and things like that. So sometimes you have to plan quite a way, quite a way ahead. Um, for instance, I'm on to one of the last rooms in the boat now, uh, but it has lots of tools in, so I've got to get them off. Now I know that it's going to take me about four days to get the stuff off my boat because I've got to get to the next location where there's a road quite close. Okay, so one year on, or just over, what's the best things about living on a boat? And that is probably the number one thing, moving my boat. It's like going on a little camping trip, um, yet you, you've got your home with you. Um, I like pitching up on my next location and uh, knowing that I've got to be there for the next couple of weeks or I can be there for less, but uh, I just love the freedom of moving to the next location and having a different scenery for a couple of weeks. And at this time of year, you get a lot of walkers, a lot of boaters, lots of new people that I've never met before, and uh, they all want to talk to you, or a lot do anyway. And uh, I really enjoy meeting new people. One of the massive benefits of living on my boat and the way I've done it is I have very, very low cost of living. I have solar that uh, supplies me all the energy I need, especially through the summer. In the winter, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit um, like I do have to run the engine a little bit at the moment, but this winter, I'm sure I'll sort that. But through the warmer, longer days, I have no energy problems and it also gives me all the hot water I need uh, so I have very little running costs which uh, is great. So that's uh, the best and worst after a year. Uh, please like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.